Good morning and welcome to worship this morning on this very special Sunday as it is Confirmation Sunday and we welcome five of our young people to affirm their faith this morning. I have a couple announcements to share with you before we begin the confirmation portions. Uh, first, for the congregation, Vacation Bible School was an awesome success last week. We had about 50 campers and about 30 volunteers, which was fabulous. Uh, if you haven't seen any of the pictures from that week, I encourage you to jump on Facebook or on Instagram. Uh, they're on both of our accounts. You can check out some of those pictures. And a great thank you to Ashley Robertson, who was our photographer uh, for the week. And beautiful, beautiful pictures. A few notes about worship next weekend. We will celebrate our high school and college graduates. If you have a graduate uh, and you would like to let us know, you'd like them to be acknowledged during worship, please reach out to Karen and let her know ASAP. Next weekend, we'll begin having our 8 a.m. worship service outdoors, of course, weather permitting, so be aware of that. And then this morning, we have a variety of things going on, not only confirmation, but also we will be sending our disaster relief team as they will be spending this week doing disaster relief work, as well as some of you may know, maybe all of you don't know, but the Mango family is relocating. And consequently, as they are here, there and everywhere this summer, this morning, we will be saying farewell and Godspeed to Claire. And so we will do that at the end of worship. Related to that, however, once upon a time, Claire did this awesome thing where they went to Washington, D.C., and they testified before Congress about racial justice and about diversity. And when that happened, I gave them a prayer quilt, which was awesome. But also that means that I don't have a prayer quilt this morning for farewell and Godspeed. But I do want to have and send you off with prayers. So I figure we can have this ribbon that can go around and you can offer prayers for Claire and as you do so that you would tie a knot in these ribbons and that Claire you can make an addition uh, an addendum if you will to your quilt uh, and so I will start this over here with John it can make its way around we'll find it again at the end of worship and then a few notes about worship this morning welcome to all of our visitors especially family and friends that are here those of you who are watching on the live stream welcome to you as well some things that you might not know and that you might have interest in for the worship service today there are a variety of traditions that lutheran church of the resurrection has around confirmation so if you would open to page four and five in your worship folder this is the list of our confirmands, and you'll note that there is a Bible verse for each of them and some information about their family and how they're connected to LCR and where they were baptized. Those Bible verses are verses that they have selected. It's their confirmation verse. They also, as part of our tradition and as part of the preparation and getting ready for this day, they each, you will see, have a red stole that they're wearing, and they were asked to select patches to go onto their stole that reflect their faith or that reflect and or that reflect the ways that god has gifted them and so then midway through the service it's their favorite part they get to come up and they get to share and talk in front of all of you and share with you their verse that they chose why they chose it and then tell you a little bit about the patches that they chose and why they chose those if you turn the page to page six you'll see a couple of quotes here as the catechism program comes to an end, each of our catechism students is asked to write a couple of short essays or respond in a creative way to one of the prompts. And so here I've given you an excerpt from each, one of the essays each of our confirmands so that it might give you a sense of where they are in their faith and what they've been thinking about. I also encourage those of you who are here in person out in the Narthex space, we have picture boards for each of our confirmands, their life of faith moving through life so far, and again, the ways that God has gifted them. And a few of them also have some of their creative projects that are out there. So there's uh, a couple of puzzles, there's uh, a game, a way of learning the Ten Commandments, and there's a, another beautiful piece of art from the beach. And so I encourage you to take a look and check those out. 
This morning, you will find that most of our liturgy will be spoken by our confirmands. This is as they affirm their faith and become adults within the tradition, that they take on that role. So then a few other things. Uh, if you will note, when we get to the space where we do our confirmation, or I'm sorry, which would usually be our creed, you will note that we have the confirmation creed for 2023 instead. And so we will have that this morning, as well as uh, a note for all of you. Interestingly, this has been a crazy week. I was recovering from COVID. Our church secretary had poison ivy. and. Uh, it was vacation Bible school and there were children everywhere and all over the place and so as a first in terms of bulletin bloopers um, Somehow we do not actually have the gospel in <laughs> The worship folder this morning and so rather than uh, Killing a lot of trees. We elected that I will just read the gospel and you can all very meditatively uh, Take that in as we do that. So be aware that when we get to that part we will uh, we will hear the gospel at that point. So let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Faithful stewards of creation, we come to worship. Sing 
called to be disciples of Jesus Christ, we come to learn. Called to, called to proclaim the good news, we have come to find the words. Called to plant ourselves by the streams of living water, we come to affirm our faith. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray, Almighty Creator and ever living God. A reading from Exodus. Then Moses ordered Israel to set out from the Red Sea, and they went into the wilderness of Shur. They went three days in the wilderness and found no water. When they came to Marah, they could not drink the water of Marah because it was bitter. That is why it was called Marah. And the people complained against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? He cried out to the Lord, and the Lord showed him a piece of wood. He threw it into the water, and the water became sweet. There the Lord made for them a statue and an ordinance, and there he put them to the test. He said, If you will listen carefully to the voice of the Lord your God, and do what is right in his sight, and give heed to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will not bring upon you any of the diseases that I brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. Then they came to Elam, where, they, where there were twelve springs of water and seventy palm trees, and they camped there by the water. The word of the Lord. A reading from the book of Psalms. Happy are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked or take the path that sinners treed or sit in the seat of scoffers, but their delight is in the law of the Lord. And on his law, they meditate day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, which yield their fruit in its seasons and their leaves do not wither. And all that they do, they pro prosper. The word of the Lord. A reading, yeah, a reading from a book of Revelation. Then the angel showed me the river of the, wait, my bad. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, brought as crystal, bright as crystal, following the throne of God and the Lamb of, and the Lamb, through the middle of the street, of the city, on either side of the river, as the middle, no. the tree of life, with the twinkling kinds of fruit producing this fruit each month, and the leaves of the tree are for heading the nations. Nothing occurs, occurred will be found there anymore, but the throne of God and the Lamb will be in it, and the servants will worship them. Then the, they will see their, his face, and his name on the foreheads, and they, they will be no more night. They, they need no light for lamp, lamp or sun, for the light, Lord God will be their light and, the re, and will be region forever and ever. The words of Lord, wait, my bad. gospel for the festival of the Holy Trinity and for our Confirmation Sunday is from Matthew, the 28th chapter. Now 
the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but they doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Congregation may be seated. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Lord God, your word teaches us that you are our shepherd and we are your sheep. That we hear your voice and we turn to you. Lord, I pray that in my words this morning, your voice might be heard. In Jesus' name. In addition to all the traditions that I have already shared with you, there's yet one more tradition to share, and that is that on Confirmation Sunday, Pastor Zorn before me and now I offer a confirmation gift to each of our confirmands, meant to be symbolic of the message that I share with them on Confirmation Sunday. Typically, it means that the day after Confirmation Sunday, I begin to think a little bit. It's always stirring in the back of my mind. What will be next year's Confirmation gift? It's getting harder and harder. I've been here 10, almost 11 years now, so it's getting trickier. Although Pastor Zorn can probably have some advice. He did this for a long time before that. And so for this year, sometimes the spirit is very active, and I know right away. I have a great idea. I know what it's going to be next year. Other times... The spirit is slower, and we are grateful that Amazon delivers things in two days. <laughs> this year, however, was one of those middle-of-the-road ones. I knew a little while ago. Our congregation, for this congregation, it has been something of a rich time. A rich time of transitions. As many of our beloved folks have transitioned to other places and other homes. I'm thinking of Martha and Jack Newfield, of Polly and Ray Sund, this morning of Claire Mengel, and in a few weeks of the balance of the Mengel family. And in that time, as Polly and Ray were getting ready to move, Polly sent me a text message and she said, I have a shamrock plant. And I've been talking to her and she says that she would like to live with a very Irish family. Would you like to have my shamrock plant? I thought, oh, I would love to have a shamrock plant. I don't know what a shamrock plant is, but I would love to have a shamrock plant. <laughs> and so Polly said, oh, well, I, it's good if you can come this day because my son will be here and he'll help you get it to the car. And I thought, huh, a shamrock plant might be somewhat different than what I thought it was. <laughs> And sure enough, I was very grateful that their son was there to be able to put the plant into my car because the vase, I don't know if you can properly call it a vase, I could hug it. It's very large and beautiful. It has green wax that drips down the side and it's gorgeous and there's this beautiful shamrock plant that was inside of it and I felt so blessed and loved to be able to get this plant. In fact, it's so big that Polly even gave me the table that it lived on. And so I took all of those things home and we put it and we put it in our family room. And I thought, oh, dear God, help me keep this plant alive. <laughs> and then later that evening, I went over and I was crestfallen because I thought, oh no, I've had the thing for less than 24 hours and I already killed it. It was it was sort of shut down and, and sort of sad looking, like it decided it didn't want to actually live at my house. It was, it was grieving the loss of its former environment. But what I came to find out is that shamrock plants, this is amazing to me, They're, they have three big triangular leaves on each sort of head, and at night they close down like umbrellas. It's like they go to sleep. They have a little rest. And then the next morning, 
they, they widen back up again to receive the sun and the light. And I thought, oh my gosh, this is the most gorgeous thing. I mean, we all know in theory that plants are alive, but this one, this one, you can see it be alive. It's the craziest thing. And I started thinking a little bit then, for some reason, what popped in my mind were these scriptures about trees and living things being planted by the river of life or being planted by living waters. And they stretch throughout the Bible. We get living waters in the very beginning, we get them in the middle, and we get them at the end, which is what I tried to capture for us in our lessons this morning. All these stories about the beauty and the power of being planted by living water. And it's kind of a metaphor for faith because when you all were much younger, your, the grown-ups in your life, parents, sponsors, they brought you to the waters of the font and you were but a little seed of faith and life. And they planted you in the good soil of various faith communities, some of you here in this faith community, and they made promises. They made promises that they were gonna box out and watch your little seedling grow and sprout and they were gonna make sure that you were brought to this place to get living water. And they were gonna make sure that they taught you how to open your leaves to get sun and how to use those roots to pull nutrients from the soil of community and of prayer and of the Bible. They made those promises for you. And we too, as a congregation, we too helped to nourish those little seedlings. Right? We would be so joyful when you all came up for Christmas programs or when you said silly things during children's sermons. And we encouraged you and we helped you along and, and people brought you to Sunday school. People in this community taught Sunday school classes and vacation Bible school. And we nurtured and nourished you. And we did things like shoot Nerf darts at you as families. It was very nourishing, very nourishing. <laughs> and now you have grown to a place where you are young trees at this point. And today you stand up here and you affirm that yes, this is good soil that you are planted in that your roots are good roots, that you've soaked up all that living water. And from here then, as adults in faith, now it's time to start stretching out those branches a little bit. And that living water that moves through you, that's what's gonna help determine how you move and stretch those branches. And let's be honest, have you ever seen trees with branches that are weird? There are some weird branches, right? Each tree is unique and different, but I've never seen an ugly tree. They're all beautiful. When they go wonky, that just means that they need a swing or they make them a better climbing tree. And so you all now, in partnership with God, that living water living in you, you get to determine how your tree is going to live and be in the world. But here's an important thing to know. Yes, you become adults in the church today, but it doesn't mean that you leave the rest of us behind. Right? In order for trees to go branches, we don't cut them off and leave the roots behind. That would not make for a very happy tree. The roots are a part of the tree. The soil is a part of the tree. It continues to nourish and be a part of that tree. So I want you to do something for me. I'd like you all to stand up, just my contramans, to stand up and turn around and look at all of these beautiful faces. <laughs> okay, so if you have been a part of protecting and nourishing and nurturing them when they were little seedlings as parents and guardians and grandparents, I invite you to stand up. So if you are a parent, guardian, grandparent of these young people, I invite you to stand. If you are a baptismal sponsor, a godparent of one of these young people, I invite you to stand. If you are a sibling of one of these young people, you might have plucked off a few leaves here and there, my siblings. 
But in the end, in the end, we help nourish. And if you are a member of this congregation, or friends and family who are here visiting and encouraging these folks, I invite you to stand. So my confirmands, there will be lots of things that happened this morning. You might remember some and not all of them. But I encourage you to look out right now and hold this moment in your mind. There is so much love for you in this place. Your family and your church family and your extended friends and family, people who will help you experience and to get to and to have that living water as you continue to grow into big, strong, amazing, unique trees. You guys can have a seat. So my gift for you this year is a keychain. This is by far the most useful confirmation gift I've ever offered. <laughs> and it has on it a tree. And I looked high and low to find one that had roots as well. To be a reminder that you are not on your own, that your faith certainly is yours. You take responsibility for it today, but that you're not alone in it. Because here's the truth about plants and trees and all those things. Sometimes, sometimes the living water, for whatever reason, we make choices that make it harder for us to soak up living water. And sometimes our trees, our leaves, they'll wilt a little or they'll brown at the edges, right? That's just true of all of us. And those are the times then to come back to this place or to a place of faith or to one of these people who have nurtured you and they will help you again to find the living water because the beauty is that they perk right back up. Just like those shamrock plants that close down at night and then they wake back up in the morning. That's part of the rhythm of our faith life too. So there's one for each of you. Uh-huh. There you go. And I actually, this is an unusual year, I have one other uh, confirmation gift that I have to offer. Now, all of my catechism students who are here today, I need you to just take this with a grain of salt. I am not insulting anyone else's acolyting ability. So, be aware. <clears throat> Lutherans don't usually give out trophies either, but... <laughs> There's one confirmand who has gone above and beyond the call of acolyting duty. His grandma and family have had him here at times when there are no other acolytes that are present. And that means that I would saunter up to the edge and I would say, hey Colton. <laughs> and he would inevitably know right away, okay, yes. I would get a grin that was somehow also an eye roll and then he would go back and get a robe and graciously be our acolyte. And so Colton, for you, you get to have the all-time acolyte award. So that is for you. And really and truly a word of thanks to all of the grown-ups that have loved these children, that have brought them to this place, all of the people in this community that have nurtured them. This day is their do day of joy, but it is also a day of joy for the entire community. And we encourage you, and we love you, and we support you. And I promise, in just a few minutes when you get up here and talk, we will continue sending all our love your way, and it will be okay. For those of you then to hear this sermon, also I encourage you to think of your own roots the gratitude for those who raised you in the faith, and for the unique and sometimes crazy and weird ways that your own branches of life and faith have extended from this place. We are a beautiful, beautiful garden that makes God's heart smile. Amen.
congregation, I invite you to be seated and confirmands, you would remain standing. Go to the podium. These persons have been instructed in the Christian faith and desire to make public their affirmation of their baptism. Ella Grace Fireovid, Carolyn Ann Klemkowski, Colton Elliot McCarty, Christopher Robert Reed, Gretchen Lauren Ward. Dear friends, we rejoice that you now desire to make public profession of your faith and assume greater responsibility in the life of our Christian community and its mission in the world. Brothers and sisters, siblings in Christ, in holy baptism, our Lord Jesus Christ received you and made you members of this church. In the community of God's people, you have learned from his word, God's loving purpose for you and all creation. You have been nourished at his holy table and called to be witnesses to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, therefore, I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church, the faith in which we baptize. Do you renounce all the forces of evil, the devil, and all his empty promises? If so, together I do. Congregation, I invite you to stand. Together we confess our faith using the words of the Confirmand's Creed at the top of page 15. We believe in God, the creator of heaven and earth, who made all things. We believe in Jesus, God's only son, who showed us who God is through his miracles, stories, teachings, and feelings. He sacrificed himself on a cross and rose on the third day to conquer death and show God's love. We believe in the Holy Spirit who completes the Trinity and is always present and with us. The Spirit guides us, connects us, and heals us. We commit ourselves to spread God's word, to live God's grace, and to take responsibility according to our faith. Amen. Ella, you want to join me behind the Filled with the promised Holy Spirit, let us pray in confidence for the church and the world and all who are in need. We give you thanks and praise always. O oh God, for your love surpasses all and your will is ever good. You draw us to your living waters that planted there. We will grow and flourish as you make yourself known to us, nourishing us as we live out your love and vision. Praise be to your name for your continuous mercy and grace. Lord, in your mercy. Loving and creative God, make us the people you want us to be and help us to follow in the path of Christ Jesus, your Son, each day and to proclaim your saving love in all that we say and do. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Compassionate God, we pray today for your hand of blessing to be upon those we name before you in their time of need, especially Joyce Anderson, Diane Ross, Ace Hamilton, Gil Stagnero, Christopher Irwin, John Glenn, Marty Kochevar, Barb Laughlin, Betty Langley, Carolyn Vance, Susan Adams, Genevieve Jewett, David Vanoli, Jay McKillop, Ted Joncha, Steve, Steve Aaronholz. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, we also give thanks to you for the gifts of life and love. We lift to you Mike and Lorraine Everett as they celebrate their birthdays. And we lift to you also Katie Neiman and Chris Hale as they were married yesterday evening. We pray your blessings upon them in their married life. And we remember Katie's sainted parents, our own beloved Janet and Ed, who are present with them by the Spirit and through the blessings of Katie's LCR family. Lord, in your mercy. We also recognize those who are grieving loss. And we lift to you Barb and Frank Muth, 
that their good friend and neighbor, Jack Wise, joined the church triumphant. We also pray for the friends and family of Dave Blackwell, as he too joined the church triumphant. Bless and nurture those who grieve. Lord, in your mercy. We ask these things through Christ Jesus, our Savior. He who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, both now and evermore. Amen. Amen. Congregation may be seated. Confirmands, you may be seated as well. My name is Ella Fyrovid, and my confirmation verse is Joshua 1 9. And I chose this verse because a couple years ago in catechism, we did, we had to write it down, and it's just been in my room ever since. And I also like how it says that God is with you wherever you go. Um, I chose this mountain patch because I love to travel, and my aunt lives in Park City, so when we go there, we always see the mountains. I chose this paw print because I love animals and I have a dog. I chose this Bengals patch because the Bengals are my favorite football team and I love going to their games. I chose this softball patch because I play softball and it's my favorite sport. I chose this North Lake patch because my family has a house, a lake house there, and I always have a lot of fun when we go. And then I chose this seashell patch because I love going to the beach. I chose Isaiah 41 verse 10 because it just like spoke out to me when I saw it and it talks about how God is always there no matter what and he's always looking down on you and I chose a volleyball and because I like to play volleyball and it's one of my favorite sports and I also have lacrosse and basketball because those are sports I play too that I like to play and these two patches are to represent that I like to travel and go places. And the cross represents my faith and that uh, Jesus is, was resurrected on there for our sins. And the butterfly also represents church and I, I don't know, like I love church. <laughs> My name is Colton, and my Bible verse is Mark 5, 36, and I chose it because it told me not to be afraid and just believe. Um, I chose Colorado because this is, I love seeing my family. I chose a fish because I love fishing and camping, and I chose a record because I like going to concerts with my mom. I put a guitar because I love playing guitar. Um, I chose a monkey because I love animals. And this shell is because for baptism. I'm Christopher and uh, my verse was Jeremiah 29:11, And I chose it because it's, it shows that God always has a plan. And like, just for you and I got the gift of basketball so he has a plan for it and I chose the basketball patch because I love playing basketball and I enjoy it. it's my favorite sport I chose the Michigan patch because it's my favorite college team to watch unlike Pastor Zorn who likes the other team I chose the uh, fireplace and fishing because I, I love to camp, enjoy the outdoors, fish, just anything outdoors I like. I chose the music because I listen to music all the time and I just don't know what I would do without music. And I chose the friends patch because I, my friends mean a lot to me. I care a lot for them and they, they, they're always there for me. I'm Gretchen and I chose Proverbs 3 5 because it reminds me that God is always with me and that I shouldn't just trust what's in my own mind but I can always go to him for his intelligence. Um, I chose the soccer and the volleyball because those are my two favorite sports. I this is supposed to represent the beach because I travel to the beach every year. It's my favorite place to go. 
chose the cross because it represents my faith. Um, the LCR, um, it's a church I've been going to my whole life. It's where I got baptized, had my first communion, and now I'm getting um, confirmed. Uh, I chose these, these dog patches because I have two dogs and I love them. And then I have the butterfly because it's the LCR butterfly. And We'll simplify things and I'll give you your cross now. Confirmands, I invite you to stand. You have made a public profession of your faith. Do you intend to continue in the covenant God made with you in holy baptism? to live among God's faithful people, to hear his word and share in his supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people, following the example of our Lord Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. If so, I do and I ask God to help me, and you can respond individually. I do and I ask God to help me. And guide me. I do and I ask God to help and guide me. I do when I ask God to help me and guide me. I do when I ask God to help and guide me. I do when I ask God to help and guide me. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, through water and the Spirit, you have made these men and women your own. You forgave them all their sins and brought them to newness of life. Continue to strengthen them with the Holy Spirit and daily increase in them your gifts of grace. The spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. After I invite you to be seated, and when your name is called, you can come and kneel, and we will bless you. Ella, Grace, Fire Ovid. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Ella the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm her faith, guide her life, empower her in her serving, give her patience in suffering, and bring her to everlasting life. Amen. Caroline Ann Klimkowski. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Caroline the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm her faith, guide her life, empower her in her serving, give her patience in suffering, and bring her to everlasting life. Colton Elliot McCarty. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Colton the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm his faith, guide his life, empower him in his serving. Give him patience and suffering, and bring him to everlasting life. Amen. Christopher Robert Reed. This Lord. <laughs> I think Pastor Nicole set me up for this. <laughs> Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Christopher the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm his faith, guide his life. Empower him in his serving. 
Give him patience and suffering and bring him to everlasting life. Amen. Gretchen Lauren Ward. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Gretchen the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm her faith, guide her life, empower her in her serving, give her patience and suffering, and bring her to everlasting life. Amen. Congratulations, Confirmants. For those on the live stream, we pray God's blessing upon you in the week ahead. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray, God of field and forest, sea and sky. Beloved, we have gathered together around our many tables here and in our homes, trusting that through the power of the Holy Spirit, God is building a great table, one that transcends the distance between us. When Jesus took the bread and broke it in the presence of those disciples he walked with on the Emmaus Road, they recognized him. May we, those who gather around Christ's spiritual table, recognize him in this meal that unites us in Christ and with one another. May we find in this meal both compassion and joy, strength and consolation, healing and wholeness as we walk together in the light of God's love. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin who in dying has destroyed death and rising has brought us to eternal life. 
And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. imaginative God, you set your tree of life in the center enlivening barrenness, breathing spirit across the dust. You created wholeness. Holy, compassionate God, you saw our brokenness and planted once again in the center the tree of life, the cross from which Christ rose to save and heal all. You reclaimed wholeness. Holy Christ, healing Christ. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Holy, generous God, we remember Christ's life and death, his resurrection and ascension which renew the face of the earth. We give back to you what you have given us in creation, bread and wine, wheat and grapes. We wait for Christ to come in glory declaring the mystery of faith. Holy Spirit, God, Shape us together in this earth, in the soil and rivers, in the sunshine and wind, in animal and human faces. Send your spirit that we may share your bounty with the whole creation. Help us cry out with one voice for recreation. Through Christ, in Christ, with Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, O God, now and forever. Let us pray with confidence in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
to have so many guests with us this morning, so let me offer you some communion instructions about our practices. We do practice open communion. If you believe the Lord Jesus is present in the bread and the wine, we invite you to come forward to receive the sacrament. We'll ask that you come forward down the center aisle at the instruction of the ushers. We'll have continuous communion this morning. There'll be four people standing here in front of the altar. The first person will have bread. Second person will have a tray of individual cups of red wine or white grape juice. The third person will have a common cup of red wine if you prefer that. And the last person will have an empty tray. If you've taken an individual cup, simply place it in that tray. Um, if you prefer gluten-free crackers, we've got those in the front of the altar. You can select those. If you would prefer a blessing rather than communion this morning, just come forward with your arms crossed and we will offer you a blessing. From all corners of the earth, Christ invites everyone who hungers to this table. So come to this table, you who have much faith and you who would like to have more. Come to this table, you who have been to this sacrament often, and you who have not been for a long time. Come to this table, you who have tried to follow Jesus, and you who have failed. Come to this table, for Christ invites us to meet God here. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Come. For those communing in their seats or on the live stream, the body of Christ broken for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. Just take one.
Please rise and join hands. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the gifts of his body and blood strengthen, keep, and unite us now and forever. Let us pray. We thank you, generous God, for the refreshment we have received at your banquet table. Send us now to spread your generosity in all the world, through the one who is our dearest treasure, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The congregation to be seated and those who will be going on the disaster trip to come forward. You stand here. Yeah, you're good. We have quite a big crew. Yeah, we're going to slide down a little bit. <laughs> well, we rejoice and send our prayers and love with each of you as you go out to share that love with God's people in need. And as we do so, we send you with prayer. So congregation, let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Lord God, we are deeply grateful for all the ways that you move through our lives and through us that we might share your love and grace with others. I pray for each of these participants in the disaster relief trip, that they would know your presence as they are there, that they would feel your nearness, and that they would share your love and your grace, sometimes through hammer and nails and other times through conversation or over cups of coffee, perhaps even over social media as we share the trip with those who are back here. Lord, I pray your blessings upon each of them, blessings of safe travels and safe work. <clears throat> and Lord, we ask your blessings upon the work that they do. All this and whatever else you see that is needed, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you all. And like I said, we send our love and prayers with you. You can go back and have a seat. And Claire, my friend, I invite you to come forward. Where is the ribbon? Did it find its way around? Oh, it's very small now. This, <laughs> this is very impressive. All right, well, very good, come on up. So yesterday, I was at the Southern Ohio Synod Assembly, and our bishop passed out post-it notes to each of us, and she charged us with writing something on them that gives us hope and that we were to place them on the font. And I was thinking about that as I was thinking about this morning because for me, Claire, you are a person that gives me hope in many, many ways. So as I shared at the beginning that Claire is a famous Washington DC person <laughs> and has been to Share God's love, I would call, I think you ministered to Congress, you might not feel, I think you ministered to Congress, and we all know they need ministry. <laughs> but so important, the voice that you have been for people on the margins, for racial justice, for LGBTQ justice, for all the kinds of justice, and the ways that that moves through you, and shines through you. It is a joy and a privilege that I have gotten to be your pastor, to witness all of your growth from a tiny little person when I came, to now here you are all grown up with branches in the air doing all kinds of awesome and amazing things. And so I actually, I have another keychain for you. 
So for you, that it too will share with you the roots of this place and how we have helped to shape you. And that every time you go out in the world and you share God's love, just by being the fullness of who you are, that our love is with you in that sharing. And apparently we also send lots of loving prayers with you in knotted form as well. So can I pray with you? Yeah. All right. So let us pray for Claire. Henry, you want to come on over too? Lord God, you are awesome and amazing. And the things that you do in and through us are beyond our understanding, beyond what we can imagine. Lord, we give you thanks for Claire, for the amazing human being that they are, for the ways that they already have shared your love in big ways and for all the ways that they will continue to do that as they seek your justice and bring it about in the world. We give you thanks for the hope that they offer to each of us. We send our love with them, we send our prayers with them, and we remind them that we are never any further away than a text message or an email or whatever social media comes next. All this, Lord, and whatever else you see that is needed, we ask in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Yeah. Service. <laughs> wow. Congregation, please rise and receive God's blessing. May God, who has brought us from death to life, fill you with great joy. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Go in peace. God calls us to the living waters. Thanks be to God. And this week.